The Frostbite Journals. Where did the light go? Journal 199. Turn it down. Oreo. So I finally, finally, finally released Lance CV English. It sounds way more robotic than originally anticipated, but it's done out there and it's released. God, I hope the scribes who are analyzing the journal millennia from now have a sample of Lance's voice preserved, because otherwise I'm going on and on about this for absolutely no apparent reason. Half-joking tone indicator. The artist I get for sticker sheets in my store has stopped taking commissions, or at least their gig is on hold for now, which is devastating because it means I can't get Abia and Finley and or my other characters done by them. But I guess that's fine and dandy. I got Jake, Dante, and Peppermint done, which is what I was really aiming for. Currently, as I write to you, I am drinking a soft, milked apple pie flavored coffee. Because coffee is something that even the poor can afford. It is absolutely delicious, and I do adore it. It's it's from a sampler my mom was going to give me for Hanukkah, but forgot about. The thing about coffee is it tastes it lasts a long time and it rarely goes bad. Another thing on my mind is how truly evil I am. Let's look at the cheat scheme. I am opinionated, willing to steal if I feel wronged, a proud capitalist, a businessman, someone who retains copyright without royalties, someone who writes fanfic and publishes it, scrubbed, someone who sells others art legally and with permission, a liar and a cultist, and I've literally sold my soul. If you tally up the brand, I'm a pretty shitty person. I guess you could argue that that is all circumstantial. After all, the stealing is coping mechanism in response to abuse, and I don't steal from anyone other than the person who is abusing me, and I technically have access to that money anyways, just not asking to use it. The occultist thing thing is my spiritual practice and what I believe about the world. The proud capitalist thing is because I have a special interest in both economics and business, yet at the same time I try to keep what I can free. I'm not saying I'm a good person, I'm saying I'm a bad person who just so happens when you take me out of context with everything eventually everyone will to, look like complete and total shit. I wonder and worry about my malicious practices. I always obtain the copyright and commercial rights, usually at a higher price, and don't do royalty because I don't have the energy or the funds to manage it or hire someone to manage it. I wonder and worry about my shitty baseless practices, my shitty work and adaptations, my shitty everything really. I worry for my lack of companies, brain cake, brain cake disbanded ages ago. I worry about myself and my future, and it could very well be my generalized anxiety disorder or my schizoaffective disorder, which I am pretty sure is a misdiagnosis, but I'm fucking crazy and paranoid and I don't know how to fucking deal. In other news, Abia's going good. I sigh heavily writing that, but she is. I renamed Alex Finley because Alexi is one of my aliases, and I really, really, really would rather that be, you know, its own thing. Finley reminds me of my friend Felix, appearance-wise, but I don't really, I don't actually know what he looks like, but I was actually don't want to get into that right now. Yes, I wrote Dante Everest about my friends and I. Dante is me, Peppermint is Pigeon, Melody is Morgan, Kite is Dave, Queenie is censored, Felix is Felix, and Zag is Zag, brilliant and Mordred, and everyone else is totally made up. I keep thinking I have nothing going for me, that my life is essentially boring, that I have no drive or rhythm. I tend to forget, and quite frequently I might add, that my life has meaning. My projects are my life. I have made tale after tale, story after story, video game after visual novel. I'm quite proud of that, mermaids versus zombies at least. I still need to learn to properly code a 3D model, but that will all come when the time arises. I really think I've found my home with my projects, with Uto, with my writing, Discord server after Discord server, or anime after art. I've commissioned hundreds of artists, sometimes more than they're worth, and while I've met a scam artist or two, and while, while I commission little people nobody knows, I deeply consider it my contribution to the arts. I 
buy from small businesses and I'm in the fandom of things nobody has ever heard of. That's me with Epic and Nevermore, The Imaginary Life and Mysterious Death of Edgar Allan Poe. As of writing, nobody knows those musicals. I have a good sense about these things. I can always tell when something is a sleeper hit. And I'm usually extremely picky with what I do and don't engage with. You can chalk it up to my inherent autism to whatever degree, but ingeniously, I just know when something's good and do my best to contribute to that. As I keep people making art, I am going to do it, however unwell. There's this thing I remember. I used to have a friend named Crocker, and Crocker was a crockpot full of a lot of different things, and I am to this day extremely angry with him for leaving me. But he had a very nasally voice and couldn't exactly sing by my standards. Keep in mind, I also cannot sing by my standards. And he asked me for a truly honest opinion on his voice. And I had to warn him. I said, look, it's negative. You're not going to like it. To which he said, please just tell me. And I told him I thought he couldn't sing. And from the years after that point, Crocker inherently internalized that. And after we stopped being friends, guilt tripped over it. I wouldn't say he weaponized it but he did hold it over my head. He asked for an honest opinion. Don't ask for the honesty if you can't take the honesty. My rejection-sensitive dysphoria makes me think every little critique is valid. See, journal, I'm the type of person to overanalyze every little thing about me and others I engage with. I could literally hurt people if I wanted. Beyond verbal notes, I truly and utterly am an analyzer, and sometimes I know people better than they know themselves. God, I should play Lucifer. That's like, that's like a whole Luciferian perception of Lucifer. Anyways, I just, I know people and I know me and the honest truth about both can lend themselves to unwellness. Man, this coffee's good. Re regarding politics, I don't think there's changing per se. I'm far more left than when I started my first journal. However, I have reason to believe that I don't agree with the majority with on a lot of things. I don't think capitalism is the devil. I don't think communism is supreme. I don't think there's racism against white people on an institutional level, which is what that phrase means. It means that it's ingrained in society to an extreme extent, which is what racism and minstrel shows and manies and everything did, even if mostly over now. That's what people mean when they say there is no racism against white people. Not that white people can't get shit for being white sometimes. I get shit for being white sometimes. I don't think my politics have changed, but I find myself way more empathetic to every single side rather than strung ho about things. I've always suffered from hyper empathy since I was a small child and it only exaggerated with my father's passing and while I have wonderful father figures now, I still wasn't raised with them and they were still very much new addition to my life. These days I find myself angry. Lashing out, I am incredibly, incredibly depressed, but my anger is what fuels me. I don't quite remember where the anger started. I think it was over being attacked repeatedly and trying to defend myself, but eventually it grew and grew and grew into whatever I am now, which is a short-tempered and annoying. Truly, there is not a human being who hates himself more than I. I'm debating whether or not to cut my hair. If I am to cut it, I will pass once more. Then the dead hair that is frizzed that hangs from my face will do. So no longer creating a shaper, more masculine edge. However, if I do not cut my hair, I can continue to live out my emo fantasy, which Brisk is being a bitch about. He keeps insisting I'm not really emo to get a rise out of me, claiming I'm a poser in order to infuriate me, and it's working. I hate the motherfucker. Not just because he cursed me for no apparent reason. Fuck Briss Hollow. Again, as stated in the last book, The Dreamer's Exchange is autobiographical. We're on book two, chapter five, IRL. There's so much I omit from that story, mostly sex and gender issues, sometimes even DID is completely omitted. The Dreamer's Exchange would be a lot shorter if I was just more honest. Yes, this means I have fucked my future self, and he's wonderful in bed. Anyways, so yeah, I guess that's the end of this entry. I have to continue the previous... So yeah, I guess that's the end of this entry. I have to continue my premises on studying time. I've only ever experienced time, let alone studied it. Light, death, 6pm, 3-14-20, 22.